Heal Me by embracing Cedric on AO3. Summary. It's the healer Deku AU that nobody asked for. Chapter 1. Starting today, a recover girl will have a student intern working under her. When Isawa had told Class 2A that he had announced to given before the training session at PE grounds that day, the notice of new intern was unexpected. The fact that it was an intern for a hero mostly related to them was even more unexpected. Sure, Recovery Girl had been responsible for healing just about all of them at some point, but her work and any supposed intern she introduced didn't seem like things that would affect the young heroes in training. Aizawa Sensei sensed the confusion in his students, so he elaborated further. The intern also has a healing quirk, so you're likely to be treated by them at some point, which is why I'd like you all to be formally introduced. The teacher explained, glancing down at his watch on his wrist. He had been told by Principal Nezu that Recovery Girl and her intern would be meeting them at PE grounds once they were done touring the campus. It almost sounds like you think we're going to get hurt a lot, Kirishima pointed out, pretending to be offended by the assumption. Ida raised his hand, even the proper student, and waited for Aizawa to look his way in acknowledgement. I don't believe Yue has a student with a healing quirk, so where are they coming from? Ida asked. His classmates around him began to murmur in agreement as they realized the same thing. I don't actually know much about them, Aizawa admitted looking around the area to see if he could spot their approach. But I think they're a second year, like all of you, so I expect you to get along with that. Izuku! Aizawa had only Bakugo's chaotic shout as a warning before he felt the blast from the young boy's student. A uh, reduced heat from his explosion as they propelled him forward. He turned and looked over to see Bakugo tackling someone to the ground and rolling through the grass for a few feet from the momentum. Standing nearby was Recovery Girl, looking at the pair of students rolling in the ground with swing wild concern. Bakugo, what are you doing? Aizawa shouted, baffled by how insane the behavior was, even for someone who had Val as a baseline. So this is what it's come to. Shinzo drawled, watching as Aizawa began to unravel his capture weapon in anticipation of needing to pull Bakugo back. He just fights people on sight now? Wait, are they laughing? Her curry suggested. The class fell silent, and sure enough, the muffled sounds of laughter could be coming from the two on the ground. Bakugo had propelled himself up and was now crouching over the other individual, practically straddling him. They could see glimpses of freckled skin, a smile, and forest green curls that matched the grass stains now covering the lab coat he was wearing. Holy shit, I think Bakugo is smiling, Sarah pointed out, taking notes of the toothly grin echoed into the classmate's face. And it's not even a sadistic smile. What the hell are you fucking doing here? They heard Bakugo shout. A childish glee clear in his voice. The figure pinned beneath him merely laughed at the same delight evidence in the response. Bakugo, would you get off my new intern? Recovery girl demanded, tapping her cane on the ground for emphasis. Bakugo glared at her before looking back at the boy beneath him, eyes growing wider. You're the new intern, he repeated rocking back to his heels and standing so the other boy could sit up. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted it to be a surprise, the boy friendly answered, taking the hand Bakugo offered him so he could be pulled back to his feet. I'm guessing you two know each other, as I would guess, relaxing his hold on his capture weapon when he realized no one was in distress. The green-haired boy turned and, as if suddenly realized they weren't alone, blushed and rubbed the back of his neck. I've known Kachan since we were little kids, the boy sheepishly informed them. Kachan, Kaminari quietly repeated, voice crackling in disbelief. Everybody, this is Izuku Midoriya, Recovery Girl announced, gesturing towards the boy. He will be interning with me for the remainder of the second year, and potentially even his third. I'd expect he'd be healing quite a few of you while he's here, so be nice to him. She pointed, looking at Bakugo, who still had a strong grip on the other boy's arm, seemingly refusing to separate from him. It's an honor to meet you all, Midoriya greeted with a bright smile and an awkward bow as he tried to dust the dirt and grass off of him. Is your mom here too? Bakugo asked, finally letting go to help dust off the mess. Yeah, she should be surprising your parents with a visit right about now, Midoriya answered. She won't be staying long though, she's flying back to I Island in a few days once I'm settled. I Island? Azu repeated with her finger pressed on her chin. Is that where you're from? 
How do you know Bakugo then? Ida questioned. Well, I was born here in Misu, and Kachin and I lived in the same neighborhood, Midoriya explained. My quirk manifested, many of the researchers on I Island reached out and requested I move there so they could study it and help me control it. They were especially interested because it was a mutation quirk and didn't match the quirk of my parents. You fucking left me like an asshole when we were five, Bakugo murdered. Resulting in a sympathy smile from Midoriya. Healing quirks are incredibly helpful and highly sought after, Recovery Girl added as an explanation. Having a properly trained heal in the field could mean the difference between life or death for a pro or a citizen. I'm technically a second year at II Academy, but because my quirk is going to be used in the field, they want me to intern with an established healing hero. Midoriya turned towards Bakugo as he spoke, once again acting as if they were the only ones there. I'll be finishing up my remaining coursework remotely, but I may need to occasionally travel back to help with support gear projects. His instructor also informed us that Midori has an expert eye when it comes to quirk analysis and strategy. Recovery Girl shared the information directly mostly to Aizawa. Principal Nesu is recommending that we teachers allow him to observe training sessions whenever he has free time. That should be fine, the teacher replied, carefully observing the student's interaction with the new intern. We're actually about to hold some informational sparring matches, if you'd like to stick around for that. Can I? Midoriya asked, recovery girl, expression hopeful. Fine by me, but only for a little while, she told him, smiling at the excitement in his eyes. We still need to introduce you to people in the support department, and something tells me Hatsumi is going to turn that into a very long meeting. Thank you so much. He grinned at both his mentor and Aizawa. Bakugo's brows furrowed and he tugged at Midoriya's sleeve. Do you have snacks with you? He asked, concern lacking his words. Midoriya smiled at him before reaching into one of his pockets of his lab coat and pulling out what looked like a bag of sweets. Always. Why does he need snacks? Sato questioned, intrigued by the sight of another individual with something he'd carry on his own presence from his quirk. Ah yes, we never explained your quirk. Recovery girl mused, turning to address the class. It's quite similar to my own, actually, save for some important differences. While my healing process is fueled by the energy of the patient, Majora uses his own energy to heal. She lifted her cane and tapped it against the bag of treats in his hand. Because of this, he often needs to be eating to maintain the use of his quirk. We're pretty similar then, Yairi pieced together excitedly. Midori chuckled as he pocketed the bag of sweets. Oh please, your creation quirk is way more complex than what I do. He argued, waving his hand in the air. I mean, you have to have such a deep understanding of the things you create, not to mention being able to figure out the best materials to use for a given situation. The amount of thinking you have to do in such a short amount of time, which likely is a very highly stressful situation, is incredible. You already know about my quirk? Yairiza asked, a light blush dusting her cheeks in response to the sudden praise of her intelligence. Midori froze, only moving lightly to elbow Bakugo, who was poorly concealing his laughter besides him. I will, I record and watch the sports festival every year, Midori admitted, and Kachan told me some stuff about you guys too. Bakugo talks about us, Kirishima asked, as he grinned, at a now scowling Bakugo. Complain, Bakugo corrected. I complain about you, there's a difference. Midori glanced between the two of them before a small smile grew on his face. The expression was different from the previous ones, as he held a whisper of mischief, something that seemed strange out of place for a soft boy's face. Bakugo seemed to notice the difference, suddenly appearing almost fearful as Midoriya took a step or close to Kirishima. You're Kirishima, right? He leaned in with a hand to his mouth, as if he was sharing a secret. Kachan thinks your hardening quirk is a really amazing. I'll kill you, Bakugo growled, though Midoriya only laughed in response. The rest of the students watched the exchange, absolutely baffled. It was like they were watching a Bakugo from another dimension, one who smiled genuinely and shamelessly at this boy and spoke frowningly when addressing him. In return, Midoriya seemed like a rarity, unafraid of Bakugo's violence, and even bold enough to tease the explosive boy. Questions and comments sat at the tip of everyone's tongue, ready to fire at the expel par of students before a sudden greeting silenced them all. Is that young Midoriya, I see? Midoriya's laugh stopped, and he spun around to face the man now walking towards their group. He took off sprinting and practically threw himself at the gonking hero studies teacher, pulling him into a bone-crushing embrace. Uncle Tosh! Did he just call All Might Uncle Toshi? 
Jiro questioned, glancing around as if to check that her classmates were seeing what she was seeing. It's so good to see you, my boy. All Might said, returning the hug with an equal excitement. How is your mother? Well, I hope? She's good, Midoriya answered, snugging his shoulder a bit. A little anxious about leaving me here, but it helps that she knows I'll be staying with you. Good, good. Hopefully I'll see her before she leaves, All Might replies. And I got a call from the moving company and all your belongings have been brought to my place. You knew he would be here too? Bakugo snapped as he crossed his arms incoherently in his demand. It was meant to be a surprise, young Bakugo, All Might softly responded. Hands held in the air in a specific gesture. He turned back to adjust Midoriya. Lemillion is here. I'd like to introduce you to him before his patrol. Oh, yeah, Midoriya spoke before quickly deflating and turning with a frown towards the other students. Oh, I guess I can't stick around for sparring. There will be plenty more opportunities, Aizawa assured him, a rare smile beginning to tug at the corners of his mouth. Midoriya's excitement seemed to renew at the promise, and he nodded his head. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Bakugo said, voice oddly soft as he tugged at Midoriya's sleeve again. Midoriya grinned and pulled Bakugo into a hug, which the other boy returned, even swinging Midoriya off his feet a few inches into the air. Yeah, I'm sure your parents will want to go to dinner or something with us before mom leaves. He predicted, pulling away from the explosive student before turning to address the class with another bow. It was wonderful meeting you all. I hope we could all become friends during my time here. With one finally dazzling smile, the intern left, trailing after All Might and Recovery Girl as they made their way back inside the school. Class 2A watched them leave, left with more questions and answers regarding the newest addition to UA's community. Damn, is it just me, or is anyone else having a hard time believing that that guy was childhood friends with Bakugo? Kaminari spoke, breaking the silence that had settled. Small explosions sparked in Bakugo's palm as he spun to face the other boy. The fuck is that supposed to mean, Pikachu? He yelled, falling into a fight stance, which prompted Kaminari to slip into behind Aizawa for protection. He's just so nice, Sarah argued, more willing to face Bakugo's potential's wrath than Kaminari was. Maybe he's had a hidden violent side? Tomoyami wondered. Many of the students murmured similarly sentiments. Do you think we'd see it if he fought someone? Ojiro mused, thinking of how Uraraka and Kirishima often appeared much fiercer than their normal cheerful personas while sparring. He's bound to have some combat skills if he plans to work in the field. I wish he had stuck around, Yarimusu lamented. I wanted to ask him more about his quirk. Yeah, or how he's so close with All Might, Uraraka noted. At the mention of the retired symbol of peace, a round of new side conversations broke out amongst the group. All right, everybody, focus, Aizawa ordered, briefly activating his quirk to silence the students. This is still class time. You'll have plenty of opportunities to talk with Midoriya later. Hey, Bakugo, you're friends with him. How does he actually use his quirk? Kirishima asked, ignoring Aizawa's demands for the conversation to end. Is it the same as Recovery Girls? Oh, I hope so, Ashiro said with a giggle. I wouldn't mind getting a smooch from someone like him. Shut it, raccoon eyes, Bakugo warned. He just has to touch you, preferably close to the target area. Oh, do I hear a hint of jealousy in Bakugo's voice? Jiro teased, smiling water at the glare Bakugo sent her way. Don't worry, dude. I'm sure you'll still get plenty of attention from the ladies, even with your cute friend hanging around here. I don't know about that, Shinso spoke, voice light and provocative as he settled his heavy haze on Bakugo. Midoriya seems to have the advantage of being cute and nice. I'm not sure how Kachan could compete with that. That's it. I'm fucking done with you, bag eyes. Bakugo turned towards his teacher, who seemed like he'd much rather be taking a nap than controlling his students. Hey, Mr. Asawa, are we allowed to pick our sparring partners, or what? Considering the only two healers we have on campus are occupied with meetings, I'm gonna say no to that. Aizawa raised his hand and pointed. Tamayami and Kirishima, you two are up first. I want everyone else observing and looking for strengths and weaknesses. All right, Kirishima raised both of his hands. All right! Kirishima raised both of his hands to high-five both Tokoyami and Dark Shadow before they ran out into the fields to fall into a fighting stance. I saw a signal for the match to begin, half listening as the students began critiquing and commenting with their classmates' fighting styles. After a while, he fed someone purposely walk up behind him. A quick glance told him it was Bakugo. So, was that him? 
Aizawa asked, voice quieter so no one else could hear him. Bakugo was silent for a moment. Yeah. Interesting, Aizawa murmured, a genuine smile grazing his lips now. Are you going to tell them? Not yet. And that was our new Podfix series. I really love this fanfic. It is in my bookmarks. Heal Me is... I love it. I am so grateful that the author gave me permission to be able to podfic it. Thank you so much, author, if you're listening. I feel you guys are going to love it so much. It is adorable. It is cute. It has a little bit of soft bakugo. I... Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Three course meal. Love it. Divine. Amazing. As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, and have a wonderful day or night, depending on when you're watching. And thank you so much for watching.